Hey, what's up guys, Ruff here. So today we're gonna to take some time and focus on DEI initiatives and some of the backlash these programs have been facing recently. And in this conversation, we're gonna focus a lot on Microsoft, who is having a very bad day today. So earlier today, there was a global outage for Windows users. This affected personal use, this affected countless businesses. It even grounded thousands of flights in the United States. This is a big mess for Microsoft. But going back to the main topic today, DEI. So Microsoft has not been shy about sharing their diversity and inclusion programs on their own website. In fact, in the realm of gaming, they have been heavily criticized for cautioning developers to avoid curvy female characters. And that was a very relevant debate back when people were talking about the main protagonist, Eve, from Stellar Blade and how people would compare her to the real life model that she was based on. And this was from Microsoft's own website, urging game developers to not reinforce any negative gender stereotypes, including this language saying, are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? And on top of that today, we just saw an update regarding those sorts of things where Microsoft is apparently shutting down a major DEI team and on top of that, the reasoning supporting this is the fact that the company no longer sees DEI programs as business critical, which is very obvious. That is the trending direction of DEI programs. A lot of companies are starting to say no more because these companies were approached by consulting firms who were saying DEI initiatives will increase your bottom line. Customers want to see this stuff. They want to see it in your structure of your organization. They wanna see it reflected in the products that you're creating. Well, it turns out that's not what customers want. In fact, most customers don't care. And a lot of them actually are very turned off by DEI initiatives. They don't like them in general. And they also don't like the products that are influenced by these initiatives. And right now we're seeing a lot of companies getting rid of these programs and it's not too surprising. But there is some caution here because a lot of people are really getting desperate. These DEI initiatives, these woke consulting firms, they are getting very desperate because DEI has basically become a negative connotation. If you have DEI attached to your name, people are going to make fun of you. And the people pushing this garbage are very upset about this. This is a real clip from some of these people where they are trying to say that DEI is the new N-word. Yes. Um, and it's been almost exchanged for, I said this to someone the other day, Right, like DEI is almost like the new N word. What the f <laughs> Oh my! How can you say that with a straight f***ing face? <laughs> so it's very convenient that Kirsha was in that clip we just saw because she's going to help us with this conversation involving DEI and the initiative bridge. So I agree very heavily with her reaction to Microsoft shutting down their DEI team. Uh, her reaction is that this is not something that you should be completely celebrating. This is only a small step because in these cases, DEI isn't just reflected in the main team that's proposing these things and keeping them in the company. These initiatives and these policies and beliefs are already very strongly interwoven into these companies to the point where they really don't need an official team. That is reflected by the goals of an initiative called Bridge. Now, Kirsha has done a lot of research in this and it actually helped guide a video I made about Bridge a few months ago. Think of Sweet Baby Inc. on steroids. This group is very, very concerning. When I made this video a few months ago, people's minds were blown by how deep bridge goes and how big their goals are now in case you don't know what is bridge well they are a dei focused initiative that initially just wanted to introduce these programs into various companies especially in the leadership positions and that's what they were at bridge 1.0 however recently about a year ago they had a restructure to bridge 2.0 instead of just bringing out these programs and introducing them to these ceos and leadership of companies they now want it to affect and trickle down to every single employee from these companies. And that was reflected by this article where the CEO and founder of Bridge would share her concerns and frustrations 
that a lot of these companies who were initially working with Bridge only did so to check boxes because they believed it would help their financial bottom line. And eventually she would realize, wait a second, that's not good enough. We want the entire company from the CEO to the janitor to be practicing DEI initiatives to the point where in her own words, it gets so strongly imbued to you that it's a part of your DNA, that you don't even question these things anymore. It just happens. That bridge is an acronym for belonging, representation, inclusion, diversity, the G is the gap in all of those things, and then the E is equity. And our mission is really about moving the narrative of DE&I away from philosophy to operationalizing inclusion as a business practice. Our goal is really about operationalizing inclusion, as I said, as a business practice, not a philosophy anymore. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, Sasha, what that does is it removes the dependency of DE&I from an individual personal function and it places it squarely on everyone in the organization. So one of the things that we're noticing right now is so many organizations are letting go or cutting back the resources or funds to their diversity and inclusion offices, their chief diversity officers, et cetera. And people are just like, okay, so if that's gone, what else do we do? And it's like, it is, it should be part of your DNA. It should be part of your, your everyday operations, regardless of um, which department you're a part of. And it goes beyond your employees. That's like right. how is it impacting the industry that you're a part of? How is it impacting your customers and clients? you know, all of those things. And so, like I said, you're, you're speaking my language. And many times over, Bridge has tried to rework their website, but currently if you click on their about section, you'll see that this initiative is launched by a group called Social Impact, which as you can see, they're a consulting firm trying to push DEI on various companies and governments across the world. And where's their influence? Well, everywhere. And who do they work with? That's a pretty scary client list. If you look at that, you can see included the United States Defense Department. You can see many different government organizations as well as groups like the MasterCard Foundation. And if you've been watching this channel over the past couple of months, you understand the authority that the MasterCard Foundation wields. They are very, very woke. There's no other way of describing it. And they use their influence as a payment processor to influence the behavior of many different platforms, especially art platforms, where they threaten to pull their services if the platforms don't censor certain forms of content they find personally distasteful. But moving back to this conversation, Kirsha made a very good observation where she discovered that only a month ago, only one month ago at a festival, Bridges CEO and some of the founders spoke at the Microsoft panel. If you think this is just the DEI team over at Microsoft leaving and that's the end of it, you have no idea because these principles have been greatly intertw intertwined into many different aspects of Microsoft and other big companies like them. And you can see right here, there's the team, there's the CEO we already heard speak earlier in this video. And on top of that, you can see, as pointed out, if you zoom in here, you can see a, a small portion of what their agenda was. You can see right there, inclusivity. So it's right on brand for them. But on top of that, what did they actually talk about? Do you want to hear what these people actually say at these things? Well, we have a small clip from that festival. We all have heard and seen that DEI is under attack. So Charlene, with your purview, what would you advise our audience here today as a response to what they're hearing within their own corporate walls. Unfortunately, our community has a legacy of dealing with attack. Mm. So whatever you need to call it, yep. do the work, period. Mm -hmm. um, this work informs your strategies. This work makes your team stronger. Mm -hmm. This work informs um, where the next big thing will come from, yep. um, how you stay current, and how you can stay a leading edge brand or content provider. Mm -hmm. So. If the acronym bothers you, change the acronym, yeah. but do the work. Mm -hmm. Because without that strategy to make your company 
culture and team smarter and better informed, you won't be able to hit the strategies that you need to meet this demand because the change is already here. And so you have to continue to do the work because when the acronyms change, when the framework with how we talk about it changes, you want to ensure that consumers know that you were down the entire time and that you were invested in them and their, them as audiences for your brand the entire time. So you have to be consistent. You have to consistently do the work. So looking at everything we covered in this video so far, I think it's very obvious that this whole issue with DEI is not ended with the disbandment of this team over at Microsoft. This is something that companies and initiatives like Bridge want to intertwine into every aspect of a company to the point where you don't even realize it's there. They want it in your DNA. That is their own words. They want it that greatly intertwined into your business, into your work, and into your mind. They go that far. So when you see Microsoft disbanding this team, that's potentially a step in the right direction, but don't let it allow you to overlook what's really going on here. There's much bigger players at hand here, and you can see initiatives like Bridge. They want you to look the other way. They want you to celebrate and think this is the end, this is the victory, when there's much more going on behind the scenes. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. As always, leave whatever thoughts you have in the comments section down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.